Hey guys, welcome to Pro Wrestling Unlimited. I'm Billy. Welcome to This Week in Women's Wrestling. First off, I want to say congratulations to the Glamazon, Beth Phoenix. I'm so proud of her right now. She deserves this 100%. She's a former Women's and Divas Champion. I've seen her live many times, and she is the one of the most talented wrestlers that I know. And that I've seen live, and this is well-deserved, and congratulations, Beth. So far, inducting her, you've heard it here at PWU that either Natalia or Kelly Kelly will be inducting Beth Phoenix. I personally feel that Natalia should be doing the inducting because it's just a better fit. They are real-life best friends. And I feel that it would be more of a connection to do that. But I'm not the WWE, so my opinion doesn't really matter to them. But I feel that would be better. Okay, moving on to Monday Night Raw. We have a match for Charlotte and Dana Burke versus Sasha Banks and Bailey. Charlotte comes out, cuts a promo, and says, Bailey is playing the WWE Universe, calling her egotistical and selfish, etc., etc. Bailey comes out. Charlotte says she will regain the title this Sunday at Fastlane. I personally think Charlotte will regain the WWE Raw Women's title at Fastlane. Sasha comes out, and Charlotte tells Sasha that she must be exhausted on stealing Bailey's spotlight, and that she wants Bailey to be champion because she doesn't think that she can beat me, as in Charlotte. Charlotte then announces that her tag team partner will not be Dana Brooke. And it will be this woman and Nia Jack's music hits. I was like, alright, cool. This could this could be interesting. The match was decent. I mean, the, each woman hit their spots in my opinion. And the way it ended was perfect. It advanced the storyline. I'm really curious in what will happen this Sunday at Fastlane. Will Sasha turn heel? Will Sasha cost Bailey the title? Or will Sasha help Bailey keep the title because she knows that she can't be Charlotte? Moving on to SmackDown. Boy, this is when it gets spicy. There's Miz TV to start off the show. And John Cena is the guest. Cena and Miz go back and forth, which is a great, great segment, in my opinion. And then, Cena goes to leave the ring. Maurice says, you don't leave this ring until we say you can leave this ring. You know what your problem is, Cena? It's your ego. You are a control freak. And goes on to say, the bigger the ego, the smaller the package. Which gave me a good laugh. And then, she slaps John. John walks around a little bit. Looks at Marie's, I'm like, you just made the biggest mistake of your life. Nikki's music hits. The crowd, in my opinion, was lit up for that. Nikki came storming down to the ring, and Miz and Maurice took off through the audience. Nikki grabbed the mic, looked at Maurice, and says, You want to mess with my man? I'll break you, bitch. And I'm just sitting there like, oh my god, this is good. I thought it was really good. I think this has potential to be a great match at WrestleMania. It could be a sleeper match because we have Nikki and John and Maurice and Miz. They've all been champions in WWE. Maurice is what? A two time Divas champion? Nikki is the longest reigning Divas champion? I mean, Miz has held multiple titles within the WWE. John held multiple titles, and is a 16-time world heavyweight champion. It could be great. I think the crowd will be into it. I think everybody will be into it if given the chance. Right after this segment, we have a two out of three falls match between Mickey James and Becky Lynch. I thought the match was pretty damn good. Mickey showed a lot of aggression, which I thought was great. I wasn't a big fan of Mickey James's heel run as soon as she came back because to me, she's a natural baby face. But I think she's doing this heel run pretty damn well. The match goes back and forth. 
Mickey gets the first pinfall with the Mickey DDT. I love that move. Before, when we had Cameron, one of the Funkadactyls, she used that move, and it just never was right, in my opinion. And Mickey uses it, and it's perfect, and she gets the one, two, three. Becky Lynch gets the second pinfall after Mickey climbed the turnbuckle and did a dive and missed. And Becky got the pinfall, one, two, three. And then Alexa Bliss comes out and stands on the apron. I was a little confused by this for the simple fact of I thought the Becky Lynch Alexa Bliss storyline was over. But it actually played out pretty well because Alexa ends up distracting the ref. Mickey James attempts the trick kick on Becky Lynch. Becky missed it and Becky gets the pin on Mickey. But the ref is focused on Alexa. Mickey tries to push Becky into Alexa Bliss, but Becky misses it, and Mickey goes into Alexa, causing her to fly off the apron. Then Mickey rolls up Becky, then Becky rolls up Mickey, and then puts Mickey into the disarmor and gets the tap out win. I thought the match was pretty good. Back and forth. Um, Storyline advanced pretty well. I'm curious to see where it goes to. But we have a while till Mania, so I'm looking forward to it. Moving on a little later, we have a backstage interview with Alexa Bliss. Saying how it's such an honor to hold the SmackDown title again. And goes on to thank herself for being such a gifted athlete and amazing champion. She goes on to thank Naomi for having terrible knees and awful coordination. Natalia walks up clapping all sarcastic-like, saying how she is so proud of both of them for picking up big wins last week on SmackDown. And Alexa is just like, well, my win was more important than yours because I'm the first ever two-time SmackDown Women's Champion. And Natty goes on to say they are both championship caliber superstars, and Alexa just looks at her like, what, are you kidding me? I'm the champion. I mean, come on. And that is like, your championship caliber until I take that title away from you. Now this, this is getting me excited because I've always been a big fan of Natalia ever since she debuted with Victoria. I think it was like, what, back in 2008? And maybe she's, she's going to get the push she deserves. Maybe we'll see a match at Mania with Natty and Alexa. I would love it. Seeing Natty get one big win at Mania, winning the title, I mean, that would be awesome for me. I remember when Natty won the Divas title back in Survivor Series, what, 2010? I was pretty happy about that. I was really happy. And seeing Beth come back, I think it would be a perfect way to have Natty win the title again. Moving on to NXT. It was Asuka versus Peyton Royce for the NXT Women's Championship. I thought the match was pretty good, but I thought each woman had their good spots. They had very good coordination with each other. I mean, Asuka picked up the victory, bringing her closer to beating Goldberg's undefeated streak. I personally don't know how I feel about Asuka beating Goldberg's streak. I mean, if it happens, great. If it doesn't, great. I mean... I mean, in my eyes, Asuka is an amazing competitor that could compete with the guys. I don't think she needs to beat Goldberg's streak to prove herself, but it could be amazing. I mean, it could be the next step in the women's evolution. After the match, Ember Moon comes out and stares down Asuka. I personally think Ember Moon will be the one to finally defeat Asuka for the title. I hope it happens at Mania. So that we can see Asuka move up to the main roster either Monday or Tuesday. That would be amazing in my eyes. Hopefully see her go to SmackDown to compete with like Natty and Alexa Bliss and all the women on SmackDown. I feel like it would elevate the SmackDown women's roster even more than it already is. Alright guys, that is it in this week in women's wrestling. Be sure to give us a subscribe and a like us on other social media. See you guys next week. Here at Pro Wrestling on